What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to transfer complex Python objects via sockets. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn how to transmit complex Python objects via sockets. And this is going to be a quite beginner friendly tutorial. We're basically going to set up a simple client server architecture, a client sending complex objects to a server, the server receiving the objects and using them on the server side. And uh, we're going to start here by first of all, creating the two files, client py and server py. And those are of course, two separate applications, two separate scripts. And in a real scenario, they would be running on two different systems. So you would have one server running server py one computer running client py, and they could communicate via sockets also via the internet, if everything is set up properly, everything is configured properly with firewalls and everything. Um, in this case, now I'm going to run it on my system here. So locally. Uh, for demonstrational purposes. Now, the idea is we're going to start first of all, by sending a simple dictionary, which is more than just a string, but it's still a very simple Python object. And then once we have the basic code set up, we're going to transmit a scikit-learn machine learning model, this is going to be our complex object. And we're going to see how that works. So we're going to start here by importing first of all, the socket module, we're also going to import pickle for serialization. Um, and then basically, the client is just going to send whatever object it has to the server. So the client is going to say socket, or maybe we should say client equals socket, socket, we want to have an internet socket, so AFI net, and we want to have a TCP socket. So the uh, connection oriented protocol, which is uh, addressed or chosen by Sockstream. Uh, and with this client, now we want to connect to the server. So we want to say connect, or actually client.connect, want to connect you to a tuple of an IP address and a port. Now, of course, if you're running this on an actual server here, you would specify the public IP address of the server, or if you're running it in the same network, the private IP address, in my case, it's all on the same machine. So I'm just going to specify a local host like this here. So you can either provide the local host IP address, which is this one, or you can just type the word local host. Um, and we're going to use port 9999 for this. So the client is going to connect to a server that of course has to be running. Um, and then it's going to basically just send an object. So we're going to say try my object is going to be a simple dictionary, it's just going to have some keys key one, value one, key two, value two, very simple dictionary here. And we want to send this now to the server. Now the sending part is actually quite simple. So what we're going to do here in this case, because we are not just going to send it as a JSON string object, we're going to serialize it, we're going to use pickle to serialize it into, uh, into bytes. So we're going to say serialized is going to be equal to pickle dump s. Um, and we're going to use my object here. So we can actually see what this does. Maybe we can comment this out here. We're going to add the accept block here. Um, we're just going to pass. And this is basically what the serialized version looks like of this dictionary. So this is what we're going to send via the socket. Now we're actually not going to do exception handling here because yeah, we're just going to try and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But in the end, definitely we want to close the socket. So we're going to say client close. So if you crash, I still want you to close the client socket. Um, and the sending on the client side is actually quite simple. The whole logic and handling of the transmission happens on the server side, because the client for the client, it's quite simple, I have this object, I know how large it is, send it, send all of it. And this is actually the function that we're going to use client, send all and we're going to send the serialized data uh, that we created with pickle or we serialized with pickle. So that is the client code. Very simple. Now on the server side, we have the magic or I don't want to call it magic, but we have the whole uh, logic, what is different here than when sending an ordinary string, because usually what you can do is you can just say client send server receive in this case, now it doesn't work because complex objects, we assume that they're going to have a certain size. And this is in fact, going to be the case when we uh, transmit the machine learning model, maybe it's not the case for the dictionary, but for the machine learning model, it will be the case, we need some more um, we need to handle more bytes than we just receive with one receive chunk. So we're going to say here again, import socket, import pickle, 
we're going to say server equals socket socket internet socket so again afi net tcp so sock stream and then we're going to bind the server to the same address um, that we specified here in the client now again if you're running this in um on an actual server in an actual scenario here you would have the address you want to connect to so the public IP address or the private if it's the same network and here you want to have now the private IP address even if it's online even if it's an internet not in the same network here you always want to have the private IP address so we're going to in this case use local homes as well because it's all on the same machine and the port of course has to be the same as well uh, and we need to pass this as a tuple like this all right so the server is now bound we're going to say server uh, listen, we're going to allow for exactly one connection. So once the connection is handled and closed, we can open a new one, but we're going to only allow for one connection at a time. And then we're going to say while true, so basically an endless loop, what we want to do is we want to print, first of all, waiting for a connection. And then we want to accept what this connection has to offer. So we want to say, first of all, I mean, before we accept any content, we want to accept the connection itself. So the connection and the client address, or usually what we do is we say client and address is going to be equal to server dot accept, basically meaning when there is a connection attempt. So when someone tries to do dot connect uh, onto the server, we're just going to accept it. And then what we want to do is we want to try to actually get the data. So we can print, for example, connection, or let's just say connected, let's not print the address. Um, and now what we want to do is we want to get all the data. So we're going to say data, first of all, is an empty stream of bytes. So B and an empty string. And then we're going to get chunks of the data until there is no more data. Now, we don't have here in the server, we don't have something like receive all this function does not exist. We don't have a receive all function, we have a send all function. And the reason for that is we know how large this object is, the server doesn't know that the server doesn't know how large the object is, it cannot just receive all it has to receive until there is nothing more to receive. So basically, again, we're going to say while true, the chunk that we want to receive is going to be connection, or actually, sorry, client receive and we're going to receive for example 4096 bytes you can also pick a different number but that is our chunk size now and if not chunk so if there is nothing we received after this command so if there is just no content in the chunk we're going to break out of this endless loop in here otherwise if there is something we're going to append whatever was in the chunk to the data like this um and then basically we have the byte stream and now we want to unpickle the byte stream. So we want to load from this byte stream, the actual content again. So we want to say, um, received objects is going to be equal to, and then we're going to say pickle load s not load, but load s. And we want to get the data. This is going to be the basis for all of this. And we can print what we received as an f string here. So received object, whatever. Um, and finally, we want to close the connection. So client close. Now, of course, this is now going to keep running. So this loop is never terminated. So it's going to always accept new, um, new requests unless we keyboard interrupt or just terminate the script. So it's always going to be able to answer new, new connections. So we're going to run this now. And you can see it says waiting for connection, I can run the client now as well. And you can see here on the server side received this. So the client terminated immediately without any messages. And here we have waiting for connection connected, and then we received the actual thing. And I can run the client now. Uh, can I somehow split this actually, there you go. So I can run the client again and again, and you can see that all of this is transmitted. All right. So this works. Now let's go ahead and actually transmit the complex object, quote unquote, uh, which is going to be our scikit-learn model. And for this, we're going to train a very simple model, the focus is not going to be on the machine learning here, I'm just going to train a basic model on the iris data set. So we're going to say here from SK learn, by the way, if you don't have SK learn, pip or pip three install scikit learn, this is the command to get SK learn onto your system. 
then from sklearn dot data sets import load iris from sklearn dot ensemble import random forest classifier and from sklearn dot model selection import train test split like this. And then we're going to basically say data equals load iris. Then we're going to say x and y is equal to data, data and data target. And then we're going to say x train, x test, y train, y test is equal to the result of a train test split on the x data on the y data with a test size of zero point. And now just to see that we don't get perfect performance, we're going to use half of the data for training half of the data for evaluating, we're going to train them all here on the client. So we're going to say model is going to be a random forest classifier and the model is going to be fitted on x train and y train. That's it. So the model is trained here on the client side, and then the model shall be sent to the server. So what we actually want to do here is we want to remove that. And we want to dump as the model. And then on the server, what we're going to do is we're going to also import uh, scikit learn. So we want to say here from scikit learn data sets import. Um, or actually, do we want to do that? Yeah, actually, we're going to use all of the data set for evaluation, because I don't want to do some fancy uh, data set transmission now. So we're just going to train the we're going to train them all on half of the data. And we're going to evaluate it on all the data. Again, the focus is here on the socket transmission, not on the machine learning. So I'm going to say here again, data equals load iris x y is equal to data data and um, data target. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, after we receive this object after we receive the model, we want to evaluate it. So we want to say print accuracy. And we're going to print here received object dot score on all of x and all of y. So again, run the server, run the client. And you can see we have here a 98% accuracy. Now there's some randomness involved. So this should change when we run it multiple times. But you can see we get a good accuracy. So we train them all on the client, we transmit the model. And we can actually see what is being transmitted by changing or by adding a line to the client, where we show what serialized look like, uh, looks like. So this is what we're transmitting to the server. So this is the complex quote unquote object that we're transmitting here, the model. So yeah, this is how you transmit complex objects via sockets in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.